there might be benefits of intensifying chemotherapy in certain subsets, and there's been a lot of talk about the intensification of the donorubicin dose in patients with FLT3 mutated AML. Sasha, do you want to say a word about that? Well, there's been two studies that have looked at this. Uh, there was a U.S. study uh, led by the NICHA group study, led by the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, the ECOG 1900 study that uh, studied whether 45 milligrams per meter squared or a higher dose of anthracycline at 90 milligrams per meter squared administered in the first course of uh, 7 and 3 therapy improved outcomes. And importantly, on that study, anyone who needed a second cycle got the lower dose. So the total dose was never two rounds of 90 per meter squared. Um, and that study showed that there was both a better CR rate and also a better overall survival for patients who got uh, the higher dose of donorubicin overall. And subsequent studies looked at uh, long-term follow-up from those patients. And one of the groups that really seemed to benefit the most of this were patients with LA3-ITD, who had a substantially better overall survival treated at the higher dose of donorubicin than those treated at the lower dose. Now, the problem with that approach is that 45 per meter squared is not a dose that these days is commonly used in patients under the age of 60, which was everyone enrolled on that study, and 60 milligrams per meter squared is a more commonly used dose at many centers. So you might ask the question, in 60 and 90, are they the same, are they different, uh, are they more, so similar that you could really just choose whatever m works best there? And so in, in England, the, the NCRI actually did a study comparing 60 versus 90 as the first course, but what's different here is they gave two cycles to all patients, not two cycles if you needed a second based on an interim matter. So we're really looking at a cumulative anthracycline dose that's much higher on that study than really anything that we looked at in the US. And that might be why they, they saw that there was no difference on that study between the two arms overall. But then, interestingly, when they looked at the subset analysis after the study was done, they looked at the FLT3 mutated patients, and particularly those with FLT3 ITD, and saw even in that group that there was actually a survival benefit to the higher dose that was given on the first course. There really may be something there in terms of anthracycline sensitivity in FLT3 ITD positive AML that suggests that we should be using higher doses of anthracycline, at least for donorubicin, in induction in these patients. Now, the real question in my mind, now that we're no longer just giving chemotherapy alone, we're adding mitostorin or other FLT3 inhibitors to frontline therapy, is there just an incremental improvement in outcome that you can get from a more intensive induction? And you'll get that with either a FLT3 inhibitor or a higher dose of donorubicin? We don't really know that. We don't know that you know 90 of milligrams per meter squared plus mitostorin is better than 60. We do know it's feasible. There's some data presented at the, at the meeting uh, that showed that it's feasible to give donorubicin at 90 milligrams per meter squared and mitostorin, but we don't actually know that that's better. And in fact, there was a uh, Korean study published in uh, JCO looking at donorubicin 90 for three days and idorubicin. Again, no difference except in the FLT3 mutated right. groups showing Although a benefit. I, I would interject the cynic's view of this. A lot of time and research energy are being spent in rearranging which anthracycline and which uh, dose of cytarabine I think we've pretty much maxed out the benefit we're going to get from a cytotoxic backbone. I agree, you might tinker a bit with it, but moving ahead by incorporating targeted therapies, I suspect, is where we're going to make real I progress. I completely agree, and, and, and we, that's where we need to go. But the, quest, the real question for you then is, based on what Sasha said, should the randomized phase three studies of um, these novel FLT3 inhibitors be done with a backbone of 90 per meter squared of donorubicin, or does it not having, having tried to do this worldwide, you will not get anybody to agree on a backbone. So you have to come up with this mishmash of, of satisfy everybody. You will never convince anybody in certain parts of the world that 90 is essential. There are those that think if you're not giving idorubicin, you're committing treason or you're committing malpractice. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So I don't think the answer, there's a, I think the solution is it's going to be this kind of general, um, uh, most common regimen that resembles uh, all of them together. I don't think they're going to settle on one that's the winner. You know, one, one point I think is going to be when we add these new agents, and some of them are more potent, uh, you know, quizartinib, giltridinib, especially in the cytopenia, I think that's going to be more important. Do you have room, you know, and if 60 gives you more room, which it does, with 90 there is more prolonged counter recovery myelosuppression, I would probably have the allowance to add the more potent FLT3 inhibitor, at least in trials, till we know more, with a lower dose, then maximize the dose. And that's something we're so going to talk about. I think about that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. One, One thing that's important also in that setting is just not all regimens are the same when you add in extra drugs. So one concern with 90 per meter squared would be that there was more t cardiotoxicity, which actually didn't turn out to be the case at all. 
but when studies have looked at adding a FLT3 inhibitor to 7 and 3, you actually have to really pay attention to when you add that drug. Right, and because if you overlap that drug with the anthracycline, you may actually affect the pharmacokinetics of the anthracycline, which could increase toxicity. So the Ratify study used day 8 through day 21, and most of the studies going forward are using that same kind of design where the FLT3 inhibitor and the anthracycline are not given at the same time. Important to remember if you ever need a second cycle of these drugs, you shouldn't run them straight in.